Welcome back, issues of Sal. I'm Ethan. I'm Ben. So we're gonna do Spider-Man versus Wolverine. Ooh. That's right. These oh, two man. finally coming to blows. Even I though, wonder who's gonna make it out alive. Yeah, I don't know. One of them does, <laughs> and so does the other one. This is written by James C. Owsley and drawn by Mark Bright, neither of whom we have ever represented yeah, on this couch before. I've never heard of them. Or will again. Not for any particular reason. It's just that they did this book, and it was a weird special that they put out, yeah. uh, Spider-Man vs. Wolverine. Yeah. Um, of course, it's 86. It is integral to that year. Yeah? Yes. It's a major milestone event in no. that year? Or you mean well, like it's Well, it was cemented. a big deal because it was like Spider-Man vs. Wolverine. Holy crap, I can't wait to this buy this. Is the first time they've met? It no. It can't be, right? Oh, like, no. Yeah. 84, two years earlier, he swats him away as he's mopping the floor with the rest of the X-Men during Secret Wars. So Spider-Man was just like, he literally backhands him away. He says, get those pig stickers out of my face. <laughs> and that's it. And then everyone just, like, laughs at him. Well, to be fair, Wolverine has lived a long time, so he knows how to hold a grudge. He certainly does. He doesn't say, like, you slapped me in the face. <laughs> Remember that time in Secret Wars when you slapped me? Remember on Battleworld when you spanked me in front of my team? <laughs> no. Uh, Snicks. <laughs> he, it, it's just that they don't like each other. Like, Wolverine mm. thinks Spider-Man is, is green. Weak. He thinks he's Green. a. He thinks he's, a, he's you know one of those. What do they call him? Greenhorns. Greenhorns. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. He's and wet behind the ears. Precisely. Because Wolverine's also like 150, so he's right. like, you're everyone's green to you, Wolverine. Yeah. And Professor X is green to you. Spider yeah. So Wolverine I guess you don't like Jubilee. Bingo. She's green. Yeah, but she's cute and fun. Oh. And she looks up to him. Wolverine needs young female sidekicks. <laughs> he always has one mm -hmm. at some point or another throughout the decades of his you know career. So yeah. Jubilee was just the next in line. And then he gets X-23. No, she's just a clone of his. They don't team up. They don't, that's so weird. No, it's redundant. You don't want to see that. You got Wolverine over here, you got Wolverine over here. You don't want to put two Wolverines, but who cares? Yeah. They do team up. It's just that, like, she didn't become the de facto sidekick for Wolverine. That's good. Yeah, she can I do her like own that. Friggin' thing. Exactly. That's probably why he doesn't like Spider-Man. Because Spider-Man's not like a like. He doesn't treat him like he's all that. Spider-Man's <laughs> just like you're just another hero. He's well, like, not only that. No, I'm like older than you and responsible and wise, and you're a, a punk kid. You're like, no, I'm not. Screw I, you. I think more than that, he's like, I don't like you. You're a murderer, and well, you get yeah. to stand shoulder to shoulder with Captain America. I think not. Mm. Wolverine's like. <laughs> <laughs> I wish he had righteous indignation for Spider-Man where he's like, how dare you, sir? I fought in the Civil War, even though I was Canadian. I fought in World War II. I fought Nazis. He's like, yeah, I fought Nazis too. Red Skull, I do that all the time. Plus Hydra sometimes. So tell me another one that makes you different from me just because you're older than me. It's like the, the classic baby boomer versus millennial argument. Like, oh, oh, I'm sorry. I'm supposed to just bow my head in deference to you because you're older than me? Because you've been there? I've got news for you, man. When you were there, it sucked. You are an institutionalized problem towards society, man. Yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't justify you killing. Right. Unless the Respect should be world. earned, brah. Yeah, Snicked. So <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. I can't afford to fix this because I don't have health insurance. <laughs> So in 86, the story opens, and it's 1980 friggin' 6. And even though this has serious ramifications on the Marvel Universe through these characters mm -hmm. uh, and their own backstories, particularly Spider-Man's, right. um, you can't have it be that way because eventually it won't be 1986 and certain key elements won't be there anymore. So mm -hmm. how do you explain that? Uh, they just don't. Yeah. And it's great. I don't have uh, to explain it. Yeah. Right. So, I just wanted to tell a story where Wolverine and Spider-Man fight. Precisely. <laughs> uh, so Wolverine is on the wrong side of the Berlin Wall. He and a disguised oh. partner, which looks like a dude in a baseball cap and sunglasses, but is actually a totally sexy chick. Uh, but that's oh. like burying the lead a little bit. I thought it's, it was Scott. Yeah, no, I know. Because it's like, it's Wolverine and a square in a baseball cap with, with sunglasses. sunglasses on. <laughs> you know it's not Cyclops though because it's not Ruby Quartz sunglasses. Right, they're just regular. It's just regular aviators. Anyway, so Wolverine and this seemingly innocuous other person is with him on the wrong side of the Berlin Wall and they're besieged by a ton of people who Wolverine reasons are all like Soviets that are in disguise. They're all like KGB sleeper agents who like approximated roles within Germany 
who are now called out to slaughter Wolverine and his partner. Well, if okay. Wolverine wasn't wearing his bright yellow and blue uniform, maybe they wouldn't have noticed. I mean, true, <laughs> but then we wouldn't have Wolverine in the book looking totally badass and cool in his Wolverine costume. But anyway, so uh, Wolverine's like, these people must want us really bad because they're calling out everybody. Like yeah. they're, they're, they're blowing years of cover right. just to send agents to take us out. Hmm. So Wolverine sets down his partner who is like Wolverine like don't do it like because they're wounded okay and they're like just leave me here and they'll take me apart you can you can make it on the other side and Wolverine's like nah I got this and Wolverine basically turns off his humanity and then goes into a berserker rage oh wow and just uh, the description by the way this whole book is a noir book oh that's cool it is a straight up like hard boiled noir story that is also a like Soviet era spy novel <laughs> okay and was not expecting that from Spider-Man versus Wolverine no oh, that's really weird so Wolverine uh, describes that the berserker rage washes over him and smiles as he plows into them and never stops wow. and as he's like tearing through them he realizes that like he's the only thing that's preventing his partner Charlie from being killed by these people. Mm -hmm. And so he just closes his eyes and the animal is loosened. And when he opens them up again, there's just bodies. Yeah. Including Charlie. Charlie's gone. <laughs> Charlie oh. took off while Wolverine was just uh, in murdering ecstasy these murdering yeah. these people. Yeah, yeah. that's fair. Yeah. You don't want to hang around for that. No. A, what if he turns on you? B, <laughs> it's gross. Well, also, Charlie is a double agent, and like, she needs to d d divorce herself from Wolverine uh, as quickly as possible. She? I know, yeah. Uh-oh, Charlie's a girl! That's a big reveal, like, two pages in. Uh, but <laughs> It'd be funny if it wasn't, because there's a heart-shaped locket left at the end. I know. It's just like, I like you, Wolverine. <laughs> this is the 80s, I'm not okay with this! <laughs> So where Charlie sat now is a heart-shaped locket that Wolverine is like, Ugh. like now I know she made it and it's her way of saying like, I won. Like I win. I'm better than you. I used you and I got out. But Wolverine also has like great reverence and respect for her. So he's not like too upset about it. Is this a continuation of a story? Or are we no. going to get filled in no. on, on what happened? Or Wolverine just... is old and also does secret agent missions on the side. And once he teamed up with this female spy assassin named Charlie. And they had many adventures. This is the last one. <laughs> and we will never know any more about her. No, we'll know more. Well, I'm sure it's going to come up. but We will know what she's up to uh -huh. for the rest of this comic. And that's all. Okay. We don't get the backstory on how they got into this situation. Like, it doesn't matter. Nope. It's just another day in the life yeah. of a pair of secret agents. Does she get involved Spider-Man or vice versa? Well, obviously and... Spider-Man is involved, but it's, oh. it's, it's more nefarious than that. Spider-Man's swinging through the city. He's in the black suit. He's wearing the black suit because he's 86. He this cover is a huge lie. No, it's not. It's not. I promise. <laughs> so Spider-Man's uh, swinging through the city. He's having a, like, he's having an okay time. But uh, You're going to say he's having a great time, but... He's a little down. He's always down. Like it's never <laughs> these. Spider Man. It, we it's it's during the eighties. He's with Mary Jane, but like it's still not quite bliss for him. Okay. Especially because like he, he's surrounded by death and misery. You know the black costume is also emblematic of the like the tones these Spider Man books had at the time. Okay. And he takes a break uh, to talk about how awesome his new costume is, <laughs> and uh, he hears this woman screaming as she's running down the avenue in the middle of Manhattan. And so he, uh, he swings by to see what's up with that person. And as he's swinging by, he notices a breathtaking woman who is, should not be in this part of town. Okay. Basically, she's dressed for something other than what's happening. Right, here. okay. And it just kind of takes his breath away. That's all. Like, it just kind of notices her and then moves on. Hmm. So he stops this girl who is coming apart at the seams and he's like what's going on and she says Sophie and Bert and he says oh shit it's and, Ernie and Bert you idiot no it's Sophie and Bert are these uh, these grocery store managers that Spider-Man knows oh they're, he they're, happens to know these people that she's he's referring from to? this neighborhood oh, okay. and this girl must be a local and okay. she happened upon something grisly that happened to Sophie and Bert so he's like oh no Sophie and Bert you know those characters <laughs> <laughs> who have never been established in previous Spider-Man stories before. Right. Uh, well, Spider-Man is like, oh no, like, 
And he thinks to himself, I should probably plant my camera, but I don't have time for that. Right. I also, go. he's mad at himself for even thinking about it. Because he's like... Because Sophie and Bert are so integral. Well, the, just well, like these innocents are in danger, potentially. And I'm thinking about making money off... Exactly. Off Ugh. saving them. What a monster I am. Yeah. So he blasts through the door. That's your life, man. <laughs> yeah, but he's... You've set it up that way. <laughs> yeah, that's true. So he blasts through the door. He gets into the store. And there's nobody to be found. But he does see a trail of blood that leads into the back room. Oh, jeez. And he finds the dead bodies of Sophie and Bert. And he's like, oh, like, so upset and taken by their deaths. And then he's like, this was too professional. This must have been done by somebody, you know, with means. And then he thinks, like, and he goes, I tell myself that taking these pictures will help bring the killer to justice. But I know that I'm lying to myself. Hmm. And now he's like... I'm just getting off on this. Ah, no, dead body. He's disgusted with himself because he's like, I'm a night crawler. Yeah? Like, yeah. That's who I am. Like, well, Spider-Man... That's oh, your job, I, man. I set up a, a, an SLR. It takes pictures of me punching Rhino. I don't, like, find murder scenes, take pictures of their bodies first, and then sell them as You're exclusive. You're a photographer. You take pictures of whatever's happening. Right, but he... No, he doesn't. This is what's happening. If he was, then he would. But normally he's sent to, like, the planetarium or to fight Mysterio. No. And, like, their photos are clandestine and also opportunistic towards his advantages being Spider-Man. He doesn't like use his advantage to like, go, oh, I hear a spider sense tingling and I hear a domestic dispute. I'll wait until a body falls down and I'll take <laughs> pictures of their, of their corpse. Right. Uh, if only Jake Gyllenhaal did get a chance to play Spider-Man, this would be a hilarious crossover with Nightcrawler. <laughs> I know, he'd have that great stare. So we get back to uh, the Daily Bugle and the editor, uh, Katie Cushing, is like telling him, like, this is great. Like, this is way better than usual stuff. It looks like you actually took a picture on purpose, <laughs> as opposed to just like setting the camera down and letting shit happen in front of it. Yeah. Like, this is incredible. Well, I don't do that. I wish you were always this good. And then Jonah screams Parker, bursts into the room, and he's like, nice job, Peter. Like, this is great. You actually did a professional photography job for once. Yeah, exactly. Like, he makes the same argument you do, where he's right. like, you're actually a real photographer today. <laughs> Find me more dead bodies. Who'd have thought? <laughs> So then uh, Jonah goes inside because he is told that there's something nefarious going on. Um, the person he's telling, the person who is telling Jonah this is Ned Leeds, who Ooh. is a reporter slash competitor for Peter Parker slash competitor for Betty Brant's affections back in the day. Mm. Um, slash eventual Hobgoblin? Yes. <laughs> in this continuity, yes. All right. Um, yeah, because he's the one that thought he had the killer tracked down? Is that the right guy or is that... No, 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 that's another story. Uh, the Hobgoblin was a major thorn in Spider-Man's side during this period and was a fun orange version of the Green Goblin, but <laughs> not totally insane and yeah. more methodical and uh, interested in actual criminal acts. Right. And there was also a huge sprawling mystery. Who is the Hobgoblin? Uh, eventually they reveal that Ned Leeds was the Hobgoblin, but uh, then, then it then turns out it. that Peter leaves disgusted with himself by taking his blood money... <sighs> And uh, Jonah gets a tip Get off. Get over and... yourself, Peter. I know. Just but he's never going money. to. Yeah. You do that all the time anyway. I'm saying he doesn't. But no, like, he doesn't take pictures of dead, dead bodies, people. But I'm talking about like, it's always blood money. You're We're always beating somebody up for Yeah, yeah. yeah but that's justice. Right. This is like, there's no justice here. There's just, just an assassination of these poor people. Maybe it'll bring people to justice. Uh, like, he he like tells himself death. that. And yeah, I, I but think he's not wrong, but he's also like, it's really more to pay the bills. Yeah. It's not like the police like need these photos. They're gonna take their own photos. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they're not gonna publish yeah. them. The police have juicier photos of all kinds of crime scenes. Yeah. So Ned Leeds uh, tells Jonah about like something happening in the city, and Jonah's like, "Ooh, I'm listening." And you're like, "Oh no, what's that all about?" So Peter races home. He bumps into Mary Jane, and there's like a party going on. And also, oh, he's late for a thing. Yeah, but yeah. it's only like a half panel. It's not even fair. We don't oh, even waste okay. time. Mary Jane's like, "Get me the hell out of here." <laughs> I and can't so, stand these people. Yeah, so Pete and Mary Jane, like, leave and go to, like, Midtown, have themselves a night on the town, oh. go see a movie, and uh, they see Cobra starring Sylvester Stallone. <laughs> okay. Uh, they don't because you can't put Cobra in there. So they see Sylvester Rambone in a movie called Python, but I think we all know what movie they're talking uh, about. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, Peter hated it because he thinks that wanton violence, because it's basically a Punisher movie, and he's like, that's gross. We already have a guy like that. Yeah, exactly. That's not fun. It's... <laughs> 
It's escapism, Peter. It's a friggin' movie. Jesus. Yeah, but it's not because there's literally a guy who does that who I punch all yeah, the time. Yeah, well, fair, fair point. So, uh... This guy just doesn't wear a skull on him. Yeah. I can't believe he actually got to watch the movie and didn't have, like... Have to get called away. He can enjoy it at right least. He, <laughs> sometimes he's got to seal the deal. You know, it's like he's not going to always throwing his hoagie away half-finished <laughs> or having half-sex with his wife. Like, he's got to at least finish something. The movies have led me to believe that that's he's gotta always He's got to leave always. Happens. I yeah. know. He the never gets to finish just, anything. That's because you only have two and a half hours yeah. or maybe a like 90 minutes to tell a Spider-Man story. And at the same time, like there's there is crime happening all the time, but it may not be in proximity to well, him. But also, it's like he's I'm Spider-Man, dude. I'm not gonna like patrol the whole goddamn planet. Like right. I gotta take a break. Right. Even if I was Spider-Man 24/7, I still have to eat or go to the bathroom. Yeah. I can't believe I had that egg salad sandwich. I had to take a total 25 minute deuce and I lost 12 people in the middle of this <laughs> like assault from the Punisher. Like no. I will say though, also be boring you, to read that when you drop a deuce in front of like. Dr. Octopus, uh, he gets so disgusted, he just forgets what he's doing. Well, that's only if he's trying to be Spider-Man 24-7 and cuts out all frivolities. There's a there's a book, Spider-Man 24-7. That's actually a story. Oh, it really yeah. sucks, but oh. anyway. So Spider-Man's with Mary Jane in Midtown, and they just finished watching the movie. And then Spider-Man's spider sense goes off like a, a huge five alarm. Oh. And he's just like freaking out. He's like not sure what it is. And he's like looking around and he's like, Mary Jane, you gotta get the hell out of here. So he basically just pushes her into an alley. <laughs> puts in his Spider-Man costume. Oh yeah, because alleys are a safe place to, for young women. Well, especially <laughs> in Midtown in the 80s. Yeah, but right now, <laughs> that's the safest place. So he puts on a Spider-Man costume. Here, hide in this dumpster. Get in with the trash. Yeah. No, I swear it's fine. And then he hears this like screaming and these shots. Oh man. And so he's desperately trying to put on a Spider-Man costume and he's like, kicking himself for how long it's taking and then he finally just throws himself Stupid into the middle motor reflexes yeah it's all it's already over well, people are dead yeah oh and the cops are like spider-man blam blam they shoot, start shooting oh. at him. Hey, i'm like, just here to take pictures of dead bodies again the pain carry my face really well yeah thanks a lot but what did he uh, miss what happened somebody got shot oh one person yeah I was expecting the Green Goblin attack the city. Uh, yeah. No, 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 it's, it's just, more horrifying. This is a very strange story. It's very like, strange. Very strange it, Spider-Man it story. It's a very I mean. odd, very somber tone. Yeah. It's a really well, uncomfortable tone. Like you said, it's it's a noir book. It like, is, this totally. is a crime novel. Yeah, it's a crime novella with Spider-Man in it. Yeah. And Spider-Man's like, I don't want to be in this. Like, that's his whole <laughs> demeanor the entire time. Give me time. somebody in a freaking costume. Yeah, I don't like, like these no, just and there's no villains in style killing. Nope. I've been around since the 40s, bub. Yeah. Get used to it. <laughs> the relationship between Spider-Man and Mary Jane at this point right here is that Peter has proposed to Mary Jane and she said no. And then they try to like pretend like they're gonna be friends anyway. Oh. And so they go on like pseudo dates together and like mm. hate themselves for going through this. Yeah. Even though like they can't address the elephant in the room. But so, she knows he's Spider-Man. Oh yeah. 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 And she's known forever because she used to live next door to him and she saw Spider-Man go into Peter Parker's window every night. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. And she, like, reveals that to him much later. She's like, I always knew you were Spider-Man. Huh. That's why I we mean, couldn't be together. I always knew you were <laughs> Spider-Man, or you were best friends with him, and he slept over your house a lot. Right. <laughs> she, she's smarter than that. <laughs> so, Spider-Man's over at Mary Jane's house because they get like, because they're super best friends, and they're totally platonic, and they're having a great time. And so, he's, like, bitching and moaning about this going on. And yeah. Mary Jane, like, gets up and stands in front of him so he stops pacing. Right. And she's like, stop. And he just grabs her and kisses her to try and get the pain to go away. Mm. of his failure and then they look at each other and he says I've ruined a perfectly good lie and you're like Ugh. well it wasn't a perfectly good lie because it was a lie well the lie is that they, they, they're they not they're not totally in love with each other right because he says it makes things worse and I see the horror in her eyes and she leaves actually he leaves because it's her apartment oh but <laughs> well, he feels he has to leave uh, yes oh yeah. absolutely so Ned and Joan are having a meeting in a darkened office with lit cigars and light pouring through slitted windows yeah. and Ned is revealing to Jonah like there are a bunch of seemingly random murders that are happening throughout Manhattan but they're not random everybody who was killed was like a deep cover KGB agent hmm and so, someone is like taking them down so Burton what's her face yeah were Sophie Sophie Undercover. Were, were undercover KGB. Oh. And they were so good, they convinced even the neighborhood that they were just like yeah. locals. Okay. Is he including the person that got sniped in, Man in Midtown? Yeah. Yeah. That's some fast detective work. And of course, where everyone died, there was a heart-shaped locket left for them. Oh. And that's the calling card of Charlie, this expert spy slash assassin, 
And they're like, what's going on? We gotta get to the bottom of the story. It's a crazy good story. Also, all the executions were done by a specific weapon that is used by Charlie. Do they reveal how did Leeds figure this out? Or it's just like, he did, he, he, he just- He did reporting. Yeah. He's a reporter. He's just a great reporter and he uh, does, never mind exactly specifically yes. how. That's not what this book is about. No, it's not. Okay. What's your evidence? Ah, uh, good theory. I have he lots has, of documents. He shows the documents. They're papers. scattered all over the table. <laughs> yeah, he he looked into their backgrounds and he mm -hmm. traced their histories yeah. and he, he figured did all it the legwork. Yeah, and uh, so you don't have to. Right. So <laughs> while Ned is telling Jonah, like, I gotta go figure out what this is all about. You gotta fly me to Europe to put this together. No. Oh. Spider-Man is... Oh, he just wants a trip to Europe. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, I forged a whole bunch of documents, <laughs> pinned these poor death... Uh, pinned these, uh, these, these, these horrible identities these to these poor dead people. people. as like KGB. Yeah, yeah. I'm smearing their reputation. Mm -hmm. I, so. I just want to go to West Berlin. <laughs> Why? I don't know. That'd be kind of cool. Oh, I heard Hasselhoff's plan. And... There's a big wall. I figured it'd be nice. Yeah. You know what? It sucks. <laughs> Next time, I'm going to forge some documents to say this is a murderer down in Hawaii. Exactly. <laughs> So while he's doing that, Spider-Man is quitting. Peter Parker's like, I'm done being Spider-Man. I, I, uh, I'm just gonna take a trip. I gotta get away oh, from quitting this. Spider -Man. He's quitting Spider-Man. He's Spider quitting the Daily Bugle. Oh, yeah, because, no. Because that picture was so traumatizing. Yeah, no, that, no, okay, no. He guy. is, he's quitting being Spider-Man. He's like, I gotta get away from the city. I gotta get out of here. So he just packs a suitcase and he's like, I don't know where I'm gonna go and I'm just gonna leave. And how often has he done this? Where he's just like, I can't be Spider-Man right now. Yeah, Spider-Man uh, no more. Like at least four times. Yeah. I mean, the big one was Spider-Man 50, but like, He's done it a bunch of times. So he's done. He's just going to leave. And so basically... Pick a direction. Start walking. Right. And Jonah is talking to Ned and he's just like, what do you need, Ned, for this trip? And Ned's like, I'm going to need a good photo man and a bunch of money. Oh. And Jonah's like, I'll call the best man you know. And he calls Peter Parker. He hey. took one good picture recently. Oh, yeah. No, he's, he's cheap. Yeah. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> That's all it is. You're the best photo man. For the for price. For under $20. Exactly. <laughs> so, and it's great because Peter picks up the phone. He's like, Mary Jane! And it's, oh, hi, Jonah. It's like the opposite of Mary Jane. <laughs> and he goes, listen, I got a job for you. You got to go. And so Peter's like, that's great. I will take it. I'm going. So How convenient. You're, yeah. You're going to Germany. Oh, oh. It's really bad there right now <laughs> and cold. So, meanwhile, uh, meanwhile, Wolverine has pieced together that Charlie's back. Because he saw, he saw the news, and he's just like, oh, I put it together. I and he never. knows the heart-shaped lockets. Exactly. Okay. And uh, so he basically bails on the X-Men, which is funny, because Storm's the leader right now, and she's like, we really need you right now. And he's like, yeah, but I got something personal I got to take care of. Mm. Yeah, so he Storm, bails. What do you need me for? <laughs> Wolverine, we need you. <laughs> Wolverine at this point is also like all in on X-Men, and is like, these people are my family. I love these people, like family. Right. Oh, he's been Diesel in the, the, in the Fast, Fast and the Furious. Series. Exactly. But uh, but he always bails on them anyway. So he's like anyone. But yeah. Yeah. Well, he's uh, also one of the only like adults. Right. Like we really need grown ups. No, most of the people of the X Men at this <laughs> no. point are just the, yeah. the school. Gene, Scott, the Storm, all of them. There, there's, there's three. That's <laughs> the X Men are a very different animal from the one you're picturing in your head. Yeah. It's very different. What's team. happening with them right now? What do we there's got? two teams, oh. and the X Men are really X Factor, and like the oh, like God. the okay. second stringers That's... are X Men. It's a whole, and they're they're building towards the new mutants. It's a mess, and all we know is like Storm's in charge. Cyclops is married to Madeline Pryor, oh, and he's no. gonna have a kid. Like, forget it. I, so, I guess Professor X is not around since Storm's in charge. X, Professor X is not only around, but he's walking. So it's really ah. problematic. <laughs> so Wolverine clandestinely winds up going to Berlin. And while he's there trying to like sniff out leads, not Ned not Leeds, <laughs> and not literally with his nose, right. but in fact looking for clues, yeah. uh, he is tailed by a pair of ne'er-do-wells. And he's like, maybe they're muggers, maybe they're KGB, I don't know. Hmm. But I will question them with my claws. So he sneaks up behind them. What's the answer, Snicked? Yeah. Oh, uh, I've murdered them. So he, he sneaks up behind them and he scares them but doesn't get any information. Yeah. And I then... Do they run away? German! <laughs> he does speak German. They run away yeah. and he's like, okay, I've got their sense and so I'll follow them and see oh, where they're going. That's a good idea. Uh, but then they get executed and oh. Wolverine's like, damn it. Damn yeah. it, Charlie! <laughs> yeah. So... so he's cleaning up. Yeah. He's in Germany? Yeah. Yeah. So Charlie killed all these people in New York. In New York, and then left and went back to Germany. Presumably, that's what Wolverine's banking on. Yes, by the way. Okay. okay. Uh, so, so Charlie is a Charlie is a German. 
No. No. No, Charlie is... But Germany Russian is ground something. zero for all these plots. Yes. Yeah. Well, it's because it's East and West Germany, and it's right. dealing with a KGB plot, so we're dealing with this, like, hotbed political yeah. location. Okay. Um, that also makes people feel like outsiders. It makes everybody, like, Wolverine and Spider-Man should feel, like, really isolated and unconnected to anybody there. Right, they don't have any allies or friends. They're yeah. on their own. Yeah. Exactly. So Wolverine is, like, walking through the city, and he picks up the scent of Spider-Man. And he's like, oh, my God. What is Spider-Man doing here? There's no way he knows about Charlie right. or this. He's just here by accident, I guess. Mm -hmm. So he basically waits until it's nighttime. And then Spider-Man uh, is at his hotel. He's Peter Parker. And he's talking to Aunt May. And he's just assuring her that it's going to be okay. Mm -hmm. And then Wolverine shows up. And he's like, put on your Spider-Man costume. Whoa. You, he shows up. But he shows up topless in jeans. Yeah. yeah, well, that's just that's one of Wolverine's three costumes. It's the brown one, the yellow one, and no shirt. <laughs> Sometimes there's a flannel over it, but like otherwise it's so just, just shirt. He's just walking around the city without a shirt on? No, he was, he was meditating at the time. Oh. Thank God he had time to put pants on. I don't know. <laughs> so he, he basically dumps Spider-Man's suitcase out, and he shows him, like, you brought your web cartridges. Spider-Man left his costume. He's like, I'm not Yeah, you didn't have to go through my luggage. You could have just asked, like, did you bring my web cartridges? I could smell them, I already knew. <laughs> I am also a dick and I want to scare you. So yeah. he basically says like, I know you're Spider-Man, let's go. So then Spider-Man oh, so and- So Peter Parker doesn't know that the Wolverine, Wolverine knows knew who his he identity? Is. Nope. Oh, so, oh, that's okay. That's so him, way, that's that's his way him of showing, showing like, look, I know you're Spider-Man, yeah. let's just let's cut. Let's cut the pretenses yeah. here, let's just go. Okay. So they leave and they like, you know, Spider-Man's like swinging through the city as Peter Parker. Cause it's like, well, whatever, no one's gonna recognize me. Or take a picture. It's also like dawn. So okay. Wolverine is running across the rooftop, Spider-Man swinging around. And basically, Wolverine kind of catches Peter up on the book and then says, leave. <laughs> you're lame and can't hack it. You're a bad, you're not even close to a good spy of, I don't have any kind. Right. You'll just, We're not dealing with purse snatchers here. You're going to get hurt. So just go away. Yeah. So Peter goes home, back to his hotel. Right. And when he gets there, Ned Leeds is bound and gagged and dead. What? And he's like, what? What and indeed? All of Ned's assassins come out and they're speaking German and then they switch to Russian. And Peter's like, I don't speak either of those languages. Right. But I know what they kind of sound like. And then Wolverine bursts through the room and then murders all of them. <laughs> and then grabs Peter and then leaves. So Ned is dead? Ned Leeds is dead in this book. And he's right assassinated now, at this point in time. by yeah. what is presumably KGB agents who are on the trail that Wolverine is also following. Wow. This is crazy. This is crazy and problematic. <laughs> you mean right, because Ned Leeds is not dead in the rest of the universe. And also he's Hobgoblin. Right. So like, what are the Spider-Man writers gonna do about the Ned Leeds character? And the and Hobgoblin, Hobgoblin thing is such a mess. Because the original writer of the Hobgoblin thing knew who Hobgoblin was, but then he got fired off the book. And so then his replacement had to come up with a new plan because he didn't know who the Hobgoblin was. And then he was strong-armed by editorial to like, tell me who Hobgoblin is. But he's like, I'm not going to tell you because I know that once I do, you're going to fire me. So like, huh. it's just a whole mess. So basically, oh and a really uncomfortable Comic-Con one time, like an editor's like screamed at the writer like, just tell me who Hobgoblin is. And as a joke, he's like, Ned Leeds. And he's like, done. So they end it by being like, Ned Leeds is Hobgoblin. And they're like, but Ned Leeds died in the Spider-Man vs. Wolverine book. And so they're like, okay, well then there was an imposter Hobgoblin that was doing stuff while Hobgoblin appears, and that takes place after this, but most of the Hobgoblin stuff that is actually part of the plot happened before this book. Right. And you know what, that's perfect misdirection because Ned Leeds is dead, now you'll never suspect it was him. And so the whole thing is wrapped up in a story where Spider-Man helps the Kingpin out or whatever, and Kingpin owes him a favor. And so Kingpin's like, here, I had this whole file on Hobgoblin, I knew who he was the whole time, and it was Ned Leeds. And he basically has all these like- Except for crumb. the very end, when it was some other guy. Right, but don't worry about that. That was Jason McIndale. Ah, but like, thank you very much for solving that. By the way, you're fired. Yeah, basically. And so- I knew it! <laughs> so Spider-Man like gets this document, he's like, Ned Leeds, but he's dead! Oh my God, what a mess! <laughs> Wow, that is a mess. Yeah, a total mess. One day we'll do the Hobgoblin saga. It actually got me thinking about doing Hobgoblin, but I'm like, ah, oh, jeez. Do I do Hobgoblin first and then Hobgoblin lives? Do I do them all at once and make it a long episode? Eh. Does Ned Leeds stay dead after this or do they 
Middle East stays dead until Dead No More the Clone Conspiracy from like two years ago. Okay. And, right. And then comes back to life as a clone and then dies. Uncle Ben. <laughs> friggin'. Uh, Gwen Stacy. Gwen Stacy and Ned Leeds. Oh, stay yeah. Dead. When we did Craven's Last Hunt, that comes after this, when Mary Jane and Spider Man are married. And Peter has these horrible fever dreams about letting Ned down. Wow. In this freaking random. Spider Man Wolverine. versus Wolverine story. St oh, That's shit happens in this where it's like. You weren't there, man. It took yeah. me forever as a Spider Man fan to get this issue because it was so popular, hard to get, and also expensive. Mm. And. Every time I would read a Spider-Man book, invariably it would say, like, as told in Spider-Man vs. Wolverine. Right. I'm like, what? Oh, come ah. on. So anyway, uh, Spider-Man is planning on leaving. He's like, okay, Ned's dead. I gotta get the hell out of here. <laughs> There's no reason to be here anymore. And the story's I gotta call Jonah. Yeah. yeah, so he's just standing there thinking about things. And then he's like, I've got great power. I've got responsibility to avenge Ned. I gotta go. So Spider-Man goes to a costume shop where you can see a number of popular items on the shelf. <laughs> And basically they're like, we're closed. And he's like, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, you know, and he's like, has a little like translator book. Mm -hmm. And he's like, I need that a- That's the smallest book ever. That's hilarious. Yeah, I need a- I have five phrases. Oh no, like I remember that actually being a thing yeah. when I would go to Italy. Like it was just a popular phrases book that, yep. that you keep in your pocket. So you weren't like quite so nerdish. Yeah. Having a huge you, yeah, no, language You always book. have it on you. You can, because mm -hmm. it's so small, you can yeah. always carry it. And it Where's the bathroom? Is this safe to eat? Yeah. <laughs> How much for the night? It's, it's, it's hotels, hotels! It's a different book of yours. So he's basically asking him like for a black body suit. He's like, mm. I got my cool Spider-Man costume. It's black and white. I, I can't go back. And he's like, well, I, the only thing that's even close to what you're describing is a costume that my like nephew or son or whatever was going to wear to a costume party. And we just finished it. And it's his old red and blue Spider-Man costume. Nah. And he's like, oh my God, I just want to die. <laughs> Because he's so I embarrassed by how silly and dumb that costume is. Because he's right. not awesome looking and black and white. This is the <gasps> book where he wears the the, but, the yeah. costume that has D the spin on, on it. it. The yeah. spider. Yes, because it's in, 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 <laughs> it's a it's a retail costume. It's not going to be head for toes accurate. It's going to have some some markings or some different some some differences. One That's of them funny. is that on the back of the Spider-Man costume it says the spider in German. And so he's got to swing around with this big, stupid, like, sign on the back of his head. They spin that! Yeah, exactly. So Spider-Man sneaks across the Berlin Wall and gets over to East Germany. Mm. And it's funny because he's like, ooh, I'm in a James Bond movie. This is great. <laughs> and he's, like, listening to, you know, like, Germans talk to each other, light each other's cigarettes, and, like... But he has no idea what's happening. He has no idea what's What are you going to do, man? You don't understand what anybody's saying. Nope. How could you possibly investigate He is anything? completely out of his element. <laughs> So he basically just leaps, yeah, the spinner, <laughs> <gasps> and so he just jumps over the Berlin Wall, but just, lands just, yeah, in like the back. DMZ. Yeah, he's in the, so they're he's just in the kill zone. Get out of there, man! Yeah, so he's like got to jump and move and avoid landmines oh and god, sniper this fire. Is amazing! Well, thank God he has a spider sense. Yes. Oh yeah. Otherwise, he'd just be dead. Exactly. So Spider-Man isn't aimlessly wandering through the city. He did put a spider tracer on Wolverine. Oh, okay. So he basically swings. He does have a plan. Yeah, right. he, well, he's like, my plan is I'm going to swing around East Berlin until I pick up a freaking signal. Right. And so eventually he does, and he finds this hotel, and he smashes the window and finds these two in bed together, and a <laughs> note with his spider signal on it that says, you're in over your head, Bob, go home. Yeah. And Spider-Man's like, damn it. We think I didn't smell it on me? Yeah. Right, so Spider-Man... Uh, yeah, I think you could track Wolverine is not... It's Smart. very presumptuous. Yeah. Not only that, you, you attached it to my chest. I wasn't wearing a shirt. Yeah. You think I, I didn't it. notice? <laughs> so Wolverine goes to a factory in East Berlin that is also, of course, like full of people who like were actually KGB. The whole thing is a very expensive front. Okay. And uh, everyone in it is dead. And Wolverine's like, I've got her sent. And then sitting across from him is Charlie in her old costume that she wore when she abandoned Wolverine in the beginning of the book. Mm -hmm. right. And he's like, I've been tailing you for days. Like, I ought to kill you. But instead, I'll kiss you <laughs> because um, I'm totally into you. Right. And then. Oh, what? It's that's the cool. redhead from the beginning of it's the It's the beautiful woman from the beginning oh, of the book, and she's no. the assassin. So Wolverine and she go to her crazy East Berlin estate that she owns. She must be pretending to be on the side of the East German government. Oh, totally. So that they will. Well, one of her aliens permit her. Must be. Right. Yes. Totally. And, but. Uh, in fact, she's murdering. Russian agents. Well, and the fact is, this is Charlie's mission throughout the book and what she's been doing. 
she knows that the action from the beginning of the book is a result of her cover being blown by the okay. Soviets. And so she's like, in order for me to ever have a life, mm. I need to kill every loose end. Anyone who <laughs> knew I was Charlie, right. anyone who knew of my involvements has to die. So I can protect my highfalutin oh, Eastern certainly. lifestyle. Oh, yeah. Or just myself, yeah. But yeah. definitely she's selfish. Yeah. And well, I also have to protect all the lives of the, the caretakers of the house, like the butlers and the maids. Yeah, she does have those. They'll go out of work if I get uncovered I'm sure and someone will arrested. buy your house. <laughs> uh, but no one will care after them like, like I would. No, I have to kill everyone who knows. Yeah, so Wolverine is like, you don't need to do that anymore because I'm here. And I'm going to plow And you. I'll kill all of them for you. Both of those things. Yeah. That's his plan. Why does he... Well, no, he doesn't want to kill all of them. It's more like, I'm here to protect you now. Oh. You don't need to do that. And Wolverine... Yeah, I'm going to hold off all the whole Soviet government and East German governments. If they've infiltrated Queens, they can get you. So Wolverine, like, romantically sweeps her off her feet and upstairs to plow her. And uh, Wolverine's plot is so inane... Because he's a murdering machine. Yeah. He's like, I close my eyes and smile and I slaughter all these endless people. And then Charlie's like, I'm just going to kill all the Soviet spies who, are, who know who I am. And she, he's like, no, you, you can't do that, Charlie. You'll lose your soul if you kill all these people. And so he's trying to prevent her from like killing every last one of these spies. Right. I mean, what he does. Yeah. Get, but he, because he knows what, what kind what of it toll will do it takes. To her. Yeah. yeah. And you he don't have a hundred years her. to get over it. <laughs> You don't so, have a healing factor like I do. Yeah. yeah. So basically, Especially one for your soul. So the two of them uh, stay in, presumably banging the entire time, but eventually they have to eat. And she's like, let's go to a really nice restaurant. And so he's like, fine. So the two of them go to this great restaurant. And it's funny because like the two of them are there and they're pretending to have a nice time, but mm -hmm. they both know that the food they've been given is poisoned and that everyone in the restaurant is a, is a spy. So they can't really eat it or really enjoy themselves. Exactly. And Wolverine like leans in on her and he's like, we should probably go. And she's like, what? And spoil our meal? Come on. And then like from the kitchen, a whole pile of spies just gets kicked out of there. And Spider-Man's like, what's I felt I got to do to get a menu in this place? And he goes, hey, Wolverine, did you know all the food was poisoned? And Wolverine's like, kill me. <laughs> hey, you now are, you know how I feel in this suit. <laughs> you are the worst. Yeah. And Spider-Man's like, oh, I'm sorry. Did, oh. I, did I screw up this whole thing? And then the whole place is full of lead. Everyone's just firing on them, and yeah. it becomes a fun James Bond scene. <laughs> Charlie takes out a gun, and Wolverine's like, I got something better than guns. I got six things better than guns. Blah. That don't That's shoot off not of my even body. remotely better than guns. So of course That's much I... harder to use than guns. Yeah, so Wolverine hurls his body at these people and slaughters them endlessly yep. because, like, that's better than Charlie protecting herself with a gun. And so Spider-Man and Wolverine are, like, kicking the crap out of guys. Yeah. Spider-Man's trying to save them slash not kill them. And while... In the He's just setting them up for Wolverine to more yeah, easily like, kill okay, them. Okay, Wolverine, you knock this guy out. Stab. <laughs> Damn it! No, stop! stop! All right, hang on. All right, I'll web this guy up so he can't move. Okay. Stop. Damn it! <laughs> so thanks, thanks for the assist, webhead. I'm not a party to your murdering. <laughs> Don't make me an accomplice. So Charlie Too left. <laughs> Charlie like, leaves in the commotion. That's yeah, probably smart. Because she's yeah. the one that they're after. Yeah, exactly. And so. It's funny because Spider-Man's like, then what are we fighting for? And he's like, because oh, I'm so pissed. I need to get it out yeah. of somebody. So then the two of them basically just go like, okay, we're here now. We're stuck, like, doing this. Right. So I guess we'll work together. We've engaged the enemy. I guess we'll just follow through and So kill the plan all of them. is we're going to follow all of Charlie's leads and try and save this, the agents that she's going to kill before she kills them and hopefully catch her so that I can, like, bang her into submission. And make her knock it off. That's their plan. That's a ridiculous plan. Why? I agree. Why wouldn't Wolver Why does Wolverine care about saving them? Here's the deal. The reason that Wolverine actually doesn't want Charlie to do this, and instead run away with him, is not just because he's selectively moral. Mm -hmm. It's because now that Charlie has killed the set number of agents you must kill in order for this to happen. Uh huh. The Soviets will stop at nothing to get her. Ah. They know she is now a credible threat and that she must be eliminated. I see. So now every government will be aware that she is an unstoppable killing machine and send everything after her. Ah. <laughs> that is so dumb. <laughs> ah, we've sent out a lot of agents after her and no. she slaughtered them all. 
We have to send out even more now. <laughs> yeah. Now we, well, now we know. Now we know that we should send all of I them. I think it's more like they were just doing their jobs, and then she went around and killed all of them. So it's like, well, now we have to stop you yes. because, like, we can't. Our agents can't operate because you keep murdering them. Exactly. So like, you're a threat to our entire. It's not on like, like, like road like, to perdition when uh, Mike robs from all of Capone's banks in order to make Capone give them what he wants. He's like, I'm hurting you so that you eventually get me to stop doing that. But Charlie doesn't know that what she's doing is actually signing her own suicide note by being right. like, I'm killing agents in the field and inexplicably or and inadvertently drawing heat on myself, right. even greater than I'm trying was. to protect my myself because they knew who I was. But, but it turns out you're actually like making a bigger target on your back. Yeah, by killing so many people. I crossed the threshold. I, once you kill like 20 people, it's like... And that's right. Like, yeah. And it really is like a set number. A report gets generated and it's like, okay, we lost 20 agents in like two days. From one person. From one person. Send so, everybody. Yeah. I mean, that's not implausible. Especially yeah. in a world where there's like superheroes and supervillains and stuff. So like mm -hmm. these characters exist. She's now like, basically it's like, oh, there's another like Black Widow running around. Right. And we don't know who she's working for. Right. She's not working for anybody, so she could do anything. Yeah, yeah. she's working for herself. Guess what? You don't send people after Black Widow either. Well, yeah, but, but like, people do, right? Like, sure. There, there's like there's like characters that are like tier one threats or whatever. Yeah. Like they're on the radar. Well, and Black notorious. Widow, like she eventually like settles into something. Like she works for someone, or she she's not a free agent who's just murdering people. Mm -hmm. You know. So then Spider-Man and Wolverine like just blast through doors and kick the crap out of people and you know it's funny and, what, oh, and do what arrest them? And they just punch them a lot and like wait for Charlie to show up and she's not there or she was there already and you know just like so they're just beating people up and not doing anything. Yes, they just beat them up and then walk away. Like okay, there. I, I just told right. you. Right. Well, or there's like if there's I've one them like in a video game. <laughs> yeah. Or if there's they one blinked off the screen. <laughs> if there's one dead body in the basement, like we know we're too late. She already got to them. Like damn it. And so they do that. This is the stupidest plan. I know. I don't understand. They, just, okay. they literally just spin their wheels for like three like little stories that are a montage. And basically like they, they finally happen upon a like warehouse where it's just full of dead people. Well, mm -hmm. thank God Wolverine's in his suit now. Yeah, oh, Wolverine finally does put on his brown and yellow costume. Yeah. So cool. You do get everything you asked for. You do. Yeah. Um, everything that was promised is delivered. They better There's fight he, in a graveyard. They will. Sweet. <laughs> so it's great because... They get to the warehouse, everyone's dead, and Wolverine's like, that's everybody on the list. So Wolverine basically and Spider-Man have a big fight of words. Right. So Wolverine basically blames the whole thing on Spider-Man. What? He's like... If you hadn't crashed into that restaurant... Yes, I could have banged her into wanting to not do that anymore. But didn't, didn't you have so much sex you had to go out for dinner afterwards? Was that not enough? <laughs> no, it's never enough. Oh, yeah, like, do you think she wasn't going to bail on you at yeah. dinner, you friggin' dope? Well, plus, like, all those people wanted to kill her anyway. Yeah. It wasn't Spider-Man showing up that made them want to kill her. No. They already want, they poisoned the food. And her life was always at risk. Yes. Her stopping was not going to solve the problem, Wolverine. No. no. You idiot. No, my dick can solve everything! <laughs> right? I'm the best at what I do! <laughs> Snicked! Uh. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Snicked a little early there. This yeah. book is about Don't worry, I'll be fine again in five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> this book is about how Wolverine, like, won't face the reality that, like, she was always screwed. Oh, yeah. Like... Oh, but what's great is he does right now. Mm. So Wolverine basically meditates until Charlie calls him. Yeah. And Spider-Man is, like, tossing and turning and having a terrible time. He like, hasn't got home yet? No, he's stuck there. He's got to figure out how to get the hell out of East Berlin. <laughs> You're Spider-Man! You web swing! Well, oh, you're gonna web swing across the Atlantic? Like, right, like how are you gonna get home? You're Peter Parker, you have a passport, you get the hell home. Anyway, so <laughs> he's, he's having a hard time because he's like, oh my god, like Ned's dead, yeah. I failed, and I'm stuck here. I haven't even called Jonah. Like, there's no story. Yeah. <laughs> so He's gonna be real wait, mad when he finds wait, out. Wait, hang on a second. <laughs> Jonah, I've got a story for you. Click. <laughs> Is this Ned? <laughs> yeah. Great shot, it's Parker! Great shot. <laughs> That's, that's what he would say. Yeah. He's a monster. Uh, so then, in a Soviet cemetery... Here we go! Wolverine <laughs> meets with Charlie. Charlie called Wolverine and arranged for a meeting here at the cemetery. Okay. And he's like, shouldn't have called me. They'll know you were here. And we don't have a lot of time. And basically, what has happened is, Charlie called Wolverine because she's like, 
I know what I've brought on myself. And I don't want them to kill me. I want you to kill me. I can't tell what? if she's wearing a bathrobe or, or a, a kimono. kimono. Is this supposed to yeah, is this supposed to be a reference to when he went to Japan? And like was, has that even happened yet? I don't know. It has happened and yeah. it's kind it, Your guess is good as mine in terms of like <laughs> what they're trying to evoke. I think it's supposed to be more like she's dressed for death. Like she has oh. like she's wearing nothing underneath, you know what I mean? Like she's just kind of like this is this is it. I'm bearing it all, you know? Uh-huh. Um, we don't see so it doesn't matter. Okay. okay. But in any event, uh, she's going to commit suicide via Wolverine. And so he holds her, he brings her in, and he's like, I know, and it'll be quick and painless. And he's like, he puts his fist up against her, and then he snicks, but he, he misses every vital organ. He just hurts her. <laughs> yes. Because he's like, he flinches. Oh. And he's like, I flinched. Like, I didn't kill her. And then Spider Man shows up, and he's like, You are completely out of your mind. We've spent the whole book trying to save her, and now you're going to kill your girlfriend? Are you out of your mind? Mu- you, you crazy asshole. <laughs> I was so right to show up here and punch you in the head. Yeah. So he stabbed her, and she's just in pain? Now she's yes. just bleeding. Yeah. <laughs> I have to tell you this, man. You pro- that probably was going to happen the entire time. Oh, yeah. So Wolverine's like, you will never understand what this was all about. You stupid child. <laughs> And uh, so you Greenhorn. Yeah, so Spider-Man like and Wolverine fight, and they just have this cool battle where Spider-Man's like, "I'm not gonna let you kill that girl. Like, she needs to be protected, not murdered with your stupid enemy team claws." Right. You needed to tell her like not to commit suicide. Right. And, and that you're gonna like we're gonna get her out of here right. and like save her life. And Wolverine's like, "No, you're killing her because she's bleeding out in the like does in the in the in the grass right, right. now." You idiot. Just let me finish it. And so yeah, Spider Man. But you didn't. Yeah. So Spider Man is like fighting Wolverine. Wolverine is like swiping at him with his claws. And it's amazing because this is one of the few times when someone actually explains what it's like to be attacked by Wolverine. Mm. Where he says, The claws whip past my face and expose my false bravado for the lie that it really is. This guy's like nothing I've ever met before. Those claws keep coming. They whistle past my cheek. I imagine what their touch must be like. I'm afraid to die. Yikes. It's like, yeah. This guy has six knives. Yeah. And he's throwing them at you every few seconds. And this is what he has done for years. Right. Yeah. And so decades even. He's just like, I'm just reacting. Like, I don't have skills. I have a ESP ability that allows me to move faster than you slightly. So he's like, I'm going to die in an East Berlin cemetery. And <laughs> no one will know that I was here. Like, this is going to be my legacy. Unless I stop him. And I don't think I can stop him unless I kill him. So eventually Spider-Man does get the upper hand and he like punches him into a gravestone and then just punches him with every ounce of strength he has until he cracks the gravestone in half. Wow. And he says like, I I hit him with enough force to wreck cars and he won't stop smiling at me. So then he realizes like, I can't kill him by just punching him in the face. I've got to let him get in close and I got to snap his neck. Oh my god. So Wolverine lunges at him, gets him down there, and then seemingly has the upper hand, and Spider-Man just grabs him by the neck, and Wolverine's like, don't even kid yourself. There's no way you can kill me. But you could if you snap my neck. But you won't. Because you're Spider-Man. But I will. And he puts his fist under Spider-Man's chin. Wow. And he's like, all I gotta do is pop these things through your throat, and it's over. You're in over your head. You're an idiot. Stop it. Now let me go kill my girlfriend. (laughs) And so right before the fight continues, they are flooded with a headlamp from a helicopter. Mm -hmm. God damn it. And Wolverine scatters. Mm -hmm. Spider-Man's distracted. (laughs) And he's looking up at this light and there's more helicopters coming, by the way. Mm -hmm. So he's just distracted by these sounds and by this, like this, by the danger from his spider sense. Right. And he senses something behind him. So he hauls off with a giant fist to the face with all the spider strength he was using against Wolverine, and it turns out it was Charlie, and he murders her. Oh my god. And then Wolverine holds her in his arms, and she goes, we did it, Wolverine. We won. They'll never get to me. And he's like, we could have walked away, you know. We could have been free. And she's like, there's no place for us in this world. And then she dies. Wow. That's hilarious. That's messed up. So then... Charlie dies. Spider-Man's like, huh? And then all the agents show up from multiple countries. Huh. Okay. We came for her. 
Like MI6, KGB, CIA, everybody's there because every agency has been tailing her right. because they know she's like too valuable a target. Interesting. And she's too dangerous to be kept alive. Exactly. Yeah. So Wolverine looks at all of them and he says, she's dead. And then the lights turn out from the helicopter and everyone's gone. Wow. I was not going to like the fact that the helicopters come and and <clears throat> spook them away. Mm-hmm. Because I would have loved it if Spider-Man just gave up and said, fine, do what you have to do. Yeah. And Wolverine kills her. But this is better. <laughs> it's more horrible. It's, it's, it's terrible. It's very horrible. So... Yeah. Spider-Man takes off his costume, dresses as Peter Parker, and teams up with Logan, and Log and just walks through the motions. Wolverine gets him a fake passport hmm. to get out of East Berlin, okay, to get to West Berlin so that he can leave, and he's just like in a fog. Yeah. And every time he's talked to by someone, he flashes to murdering Charlie. Yeah. So like he gets to the passport agent, boom, he killed Charlie. He gets he lands in like JFK, boom. He killed Charlie. Wolverine looks at Spider-Man and then like walks away. The two of them just like leave each other. Boom, he killed Charlie. He finally gets home. His apartment's full of bills. He looks at his costume. Boom, I killed this woman. Yeah. Phone rings and it's Jonah. And he's like, Parker, I'm so glad you're here. Listen, I just got the film that you sent from overseas, like the, from, the, from your beginning of the trip. Amazing stuff. Where is Ned? <laughs> and Peter hangs oh, yeah. up on him. Wow. And then goes to Mary Jane's apartment and then just like pulls her in. And he's like, I really could use a friend right now. And she's like, well, welcome back to the world. And then hugs him and the book ends. And like, of course, Charlie commits suicide via Spider-Man. She knows yeah, that she he's going to he think was... that he's Wolverine. Yeah. So it's all deliberate. Yeah. But this will haunt Spider-Man. It's one of the only lives he's ever taken. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Ever. Yeah. At this point, it's without, the first life. Without someone who's actually like, like failing to kill someone, no, he actually killed this person. Yeah, yeah. and she didn't deserve it. She wasn't no. like a super villain or anything. Right. Well, yeah. she did kind of deserve <laughs> it. Well, she killed a lot of people, but they were like HCP agents. So right. Like, you, they weren't like totally innocent. No, no, it's true. They were not innocent. Neither no, is but she. she was still a murderer. Yeah, yeah. She, yeah. she was a murderer. Yeah, but yeah. she was and a murderer for die. like good. She wanted reasons. to die anyway. She wanted Wolverine. To <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's the only thing that takes like the edge off a little bit. But I don't think Spider Man. He has no. He doesn't care about, about that. that. Yeah, he's like she. Should. I was trying to save her. Yeah, and I killed her. And instead. I murdered her instead with my yeah. spider strength. I think it'd be hilarious. I if, caved her face in. <laughs> if she wanted to be like, stop, let him kill, punch. <laughs> this works too. Okay. <laughs> yeah. No, she did it on. But she ran at him because she knew that he was going to think that it was. That it, it was, was Wolverine. Wolverine. Yeah. But. Yeah, so wow. this has ramifications. It, of course, like gives Spider-Man major PTSD for the rest yeah. of his life. Uh, and yeah. also, it informs his relationship with Wolverine forever. Yeah. Uh, That's funny, though, because I don't remember ever hearing about this. No. Or seeing Spider-Man reflect on this. They try really hard not to talk about it ever again. You mean <laughs> the woman that Spider-Man murdered. Yeah. yeah. Though there is a great issue that Dan Slott did with Marcos Martin where Spider-Man reflects on all the lives that have been lost on his watch. And... It's great because it's like this vision, right, of all these people. And then they all part and Charlemagne is in the middle. And he's like, oh, like Charlie, the one person I've killed. Mm. It's, it, it's a really beautiful sequence mm. and is a kind of cool nod to continuity. Yeah. Um, it's, I'm sure in trade somewhere, I'll put a link in the description so you can grab wherever this is located. But you can also get it in most long boxes nowadays at any con or shop mm -hmm. because like, Comics are worthless now. So, like, this thing used to be, like, $15, $20, and now isn't. So, right. You know. <laughs> but it's still, it, it's a really cool story that, again, 86, East Berlin, you can't do this anymore. Yeah. It doesn't make any sense. Right. There's also a great What If comic that came out way too late, <laughs> in which, instead of parting at the airport, mm -hmm. Wolverine right. feels bad for him, and he's like, hey, Slim, come with me. And Spider-Man and Wolverine I'm basically get you drunk. Basically, <laughs> no. The two of them team up and they go on like more spy missions together because huh. Spider-Man owes it to Charlie to try and like avenge her. And so Spider-Man becomes like a secret agent slash assassin. Oh, what? Yeah. Well, I killed one person. I'll kill them all. <laughs> he doesn't deliberately go in that direction <laughs> but he does he ends up to, having to kill people yes. to preserve his cover or and there's whatever. a great moment because he also changed his costume to reflect his like new crazy attitude uh -huh. but uh, there's a great moment where he's like fight, facing off against this like total asshole he's got his hand out to web him and he goes 
webs aren't going to stop me. And Spider-Man goes, I know. And then makes a fist instead of a whip, and it fires a bullet through the guy's face. Oh, wow. And he's like, that's it. That's from, that, this is who I am now. Oh, my and, God. And, yeah, it's a really cool story that is a great companion piece to this. As like, hey, what if this happened? Right. Spider-Man would become a murderer if only Wolverine had just stayed with him a little longer. Yeah. Well, because Spider-Man's also like in a vulnerable, <laughs> yeah. receptive state. Yeah, it's like, oh, what, I'm and so messed up. And that's all Wolverine like, does. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. What's funny is as a result of that, neither Spider-Man nor Wolverine like return to their respective lives. Like Wolverine doesn't become an X-Man again. Right. And Spider-Man has to like give Black Widow or Silver Sable or something like a letter to Mary Jane that says like, tell Aunt May I'm sorry I never came home. <laughs> that's interesting because because he's not with Mary Jane. This is one of the that's one of the few times when he can just go off and do something else, and it doesn't totally mess up. Yeah, his prior life, like his life, isn't that great at this point. No. So like, why not run off with Wolverine and and go do on these crazy, crazy adventures? Yeah. yeah. Spider Man versus Wolverine is a really killer book. No <laughs> pun intended, or maybe there is, but uh, I would recommend reading it because it's a, it's essential reading for Spider Man. Mm -hmm. Not so much Wolverine. It's more yeah. like Wolverine is a plot device. And it doesn't really look favorably upon him as a character. Yeah. But, uh, but well, he, and it's also just him being like his normal self. Yes. Like this but is a very, very typical Wolverine yeah. story where it's but a very it atypical Spider-Man story. Certainly. And you'll never see another Spider-Man story like this where it's like really dark and noir filled. And he's like, he's always self-loathing, but not in a like, you know, gravel voiced <laughs> through the ceiling fan, yeah. black and white kind of way. It is nice that the connection with Spider-Man and Wolverine is that Wolverine knew Charlie. Yes. And the biggest regret, apparently, that Spider-Man did, like, where, like, I killed someone, mm -hmm. was a connection to Wolverine. Yeah, that's yeah, interesting. That's cool. It's funny, because there's also, we did a book called The Astonishing Spider-Man and Wolverine. Never comes up. Oh. I'm like, really? You can like, mention that time, that, that time, one time that... <laughs> that one time we had a big team-up that informed most Spider-Man continuity. It's amazing. He... Like, they, they ship Ned Leeds' body from Berlin. You know, they gotta go pick it up, and, like, Peter's there, and Jonah's like, why didn't you call, you asshole? Mm -hmm. His widow is freaking out, yeah. and she was your friend, man. Like, it, it informs the rest of the series, even though it's basically a throwaway book about Spider-Man and Wolverine. <laughs> I'm sure that the origins are like, do a book where Spider-Man fights Wolverine, and they're like, oh, I'll give you a Spider-Man versus Wolverine. <laughs> uh... I always wanted to tell a noir East versus West uh, spy story. Right, and, and uh, couch it with these costumed adventurers. <laughs> well, and I got the, the, the charge to write a Spider-Man Wolverine book, so I'll just like smash them yeah. together. And it, it, it kind of works. Yeah. It's just also weirdly, tonally inconsistent with the character. Yes. Well, it's totally never, it's something we've never seen before. <laughs> yeah, but at least Spider-Man doesn't then like, this is me now! Yeah. I'm dark! And it's like, no. It's, no. I mean, Craven's Last Hunt gets pretty dark, but it never, yeah. it never feels as hopeless Oddly enough, and that mm -hmm. in that book he's buried alive and has to fight like a rat man. <laughs> right, but the world isn't as like in th this is like there's nothing I can do. The whole world is screwed up. This, there's all this yeah. east versus west. There's these spies. These people are murdering no, each no, other. No, no one even speaks the language. I can't save I'm this person yeah. because like so many people are trying to kill her. Right, and. I can't save her because she won't let me. Like, I don't right. understand right. the language or the morality yeah. or who these people I'm working with. Yeah, it's just totally powerless. Yeah. Like, she it's could a have committed can't suicide punch. at any right. point if she wanted to, but she wanted to do it a specific way with someone she cared about. Yeah. yeah. And you took that from her. <laughs> That's true. She does die in his arms, though. Which is yeah, funny. yeah, it worked out for her. Yeah, yeah. thank Basically. God he didn't, like, just Close punch to what her she once wanted. and, like, oh, her head came off. <laughs> yeah, oh, it's over. Uh, I mean, it should be. <laughs> well, yeah. And then it lands in Wolverine's lap. And he's ah! like, well done, Slim. Anyway. I like, um... I like the idea that the What If book after this, mm -hmm. they team up and Wolverine's like, I imagine Spider-Man would be like, I can't believe you forgive me after this. He's like, what? Because you killed Charlie? Charlie's going to die anyway. Yeah. I kill people all the time. <laughs> it's not a big deal. Exactly. <laughs> I'm not broken up over it. <laughs> you know how many people I've killed? Trust me, I've gotten past it a lot. Yeah. I have to get over it all the time. I like that um, the agents at the end, Yeah, they're just like, they have a clear like dividing line between this woman, Charlie, mm -hmm. and these like superheroes. superheroes. They're like, no, we're not here for you. Right. Because you don't interfere in our affairs. Exactly. Like, you save people from burning buildings and crap. Mm -hmm. She was trying to like change 
the power dynamic between superpowers. Like, yeah. she's dangerous. You're just, yeah. you know, If I uninvolved. have to deal with the mole man, I'll give you a call. Right. Spider-Man vs. Wolverine. Thanks a lot for watching, everybody. We'll see you guys next time with another episode. I'm Sal. I'm Ethan. I'm Ben. So long. Snicked. Snicked. Snicked.